Hi everyone, in this lecture we are going to talk about the insert statement. The insert statement is the creation part of the CRUD functionality and it inserts or adds one or more records or rows into a table. So how does this actually work? So um, as opposed to the select statement where it's read from the database, this is going to make changes to the database in the sense that you're not updating any rows, you're creating new records. So how does that actually work? We have already selected our database using this command. And then let's say we want to grab this countries uh, table. So how can we grab the countries table and insert values? So I'm going to say insert the complete command is actually insert into, but in short, we just call it insert. Now, there are two approaches to inserting a single record or, or multiple records. So I'm going to say approach, approach one, adding a single record. Just capitalize this one as well. I just want everything to be as organized as much as possible. So first off, you need to specify which table it is that you want to insert these records into. So in this case, it is the table of countries. And then what are the values that you want to insert into this table? Now keep in mind, columns, they have values. So we have values. You're just going to write values. It is a SQL command. And then we are going to terminate it with a semicolon. Now in here, you need to be very careful whenever you're making changes into a ta table. You need to follow the table settings. So if you take a look at the table settings, you can see that the first column has a data type of character char2, which means you can only add two characters. The second column has var char, which is variable number of characters or varying number of characters. You can add up to 40 characters. And the third one is going to be integer. Now, there is one more thing. I'm going to talk about these two first. So the first one is the primary key. The second one, NN, is equal to not null. Whenever we have a not null for a specific column, it means that the user has to insert something. If the user doesn't insert anything into that for that column, you're going to, you're going to end up with an error, and you need to catch that error. And you can see that we not null means that it is a required column. This column must have data. When, when you do not tick it, like in this case, in the case of country name, you either provide it with a default, with a default or you just don't provide it with anything. So if the user does not insert, for example, the user inserts country ID and region ID, but not the country name, by default, you're going to insert null or empty there. The null is a special type like, we're going to talk about it a lot. I've dedicated a lecture to it. It's like the none type for Python. It is exactly like the none type. It is. It shows the absence of a value. And that's all it is. It's nothing else. It's a speci special data type. So these two columns are required. You can see that we have two restrictions on these two columns. So the character number... Ha, uh, cannot go beyond two and for this cannot go beyond 40 so we, you need to keep that in mind and uh, this one so you can see that this is a character this is a character and this is an integer so in the first and second column you need to pass in characters and in third one you need to pass in an integer so how can we go ahead so i'm just going to say let's open up quotes because it is a string i'm going to say af so this is the first and we know the limit is two so i'm not going to provide more than that then I'm going to say Afghanistan. So there is an A missing. There we go. And it is definitely less than 40. And then we have a an integer. Now the integer doesn't have a limit. Even though the countries it has like single digit um, region IDs, I could provide as many digits as I want. So I'm just going to say 1001. That's it. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to run this. You can see that insert into values. And it says how many rows or records have been affected. Only one row has been affected. That's what you can see right here. Now, if you take a look at it here, there is nothing here. Why? Because whenever we got this table, whenever we query, we got it from this database. 
we, uh, it, we didn't have Afghanistan. Now we need to rerun it so it grabs Afghanistan because we added it. Now you need to rerun this table so it, it, it shows the changes that we have done. So I'm just going to execute this query one more time. So there you go. It says AF Afghanistan 1001. So this is the first approach that you can insert new records into a database. So now if you like close this and close the table settings, if you like open this Halali DB, you go to uh, countries. When you hit when you open them, you can see that we have created a new record into this table. Now I'm going to copy this part. I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to say this is example number nine. Let me comment out these two. Whenever you have uh, executed your insert statement to avoid uh, committing duplicates, you need to comment it out. So if I were to run this again, it would create another duplicate key. So it is approach two. And I'm going to say approach one. This is uh, adding a single record. So in the second approach, the way that you can add another uh, another record is in front of the table name, you specify the table columns. Now, it is a lot, a little bit more work, but it is actually a good practice because you can see your table names and that way you're not confused at what it is that you want to insert. So we have a uh, country ID, we have country name, and then we have region underscore ID. So now let's save that. I'm not going to run it because I do not want to commit this one to our database. I'm going to say, uh, let's take a look at this. So if I click on this, now this is alphabetical. Let's just click on it. Let's go to N. I don't think we have New Zealand here. So we have New Netherlands, Nigeria, and that's it. So I'm going to provide an NZ for New Zealand one of my favorite countries so Zealand perfect and I'm gonna say 9009 because it's a favorite so I'm just gonna save it and I'm gonna run it again and now you can see it says one row affected if we come here rerun this let's take a look at that let's uh, there we go so you can see NZ New Zealand 9009 uh, what if you want to insert more than one record how can you go about that? So let me just copy all of that. Let's come down here, paste it. I'm going to comment out these two. And to be able to insert more than one record, you need to call this insert statement more than one times. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we are going to copy this and put it down here. So the first one, I'm just going to say JT. I'm sure you cannot guess it. So it is Jupiter. And I'm going to say it is 2002. And the other one is going to be 303. And the country ID is going to be MZ. I'm sure you cannot get, guess this one as well. It is Mars. 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 So we have, so you need to call this insert, insert statement twice. You need to uh, terminate it with a semicolon. There we go. This is how you can insert multiple records. So let's save that. Let's run it. Now you can see that one row was affected for Jupiter and one was affected for um, Mars. If you come here, if you rerun this, just click on it. There we go. So we have New Zealand, Mars, Jupiter, and Afghanistan. With this, our lecture comes to an end. See you in the next one.